So good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our uh, our third talk. Uh, so the talk will start in another four minutes. Um, I also welcome uh, Miss Kay. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. And also, oh, oh, hi, Miss Kay. <laughs> Uh, and also uh, Zazie, one of our speakers tonight. Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you are both doing fine. So yeah, the talk will start in another four minutes. So stay tuned.
So um, good evening, everyone, and um, welcome uh, for joining. Uh, thank you for joining our talk. Um, I would like to ask uh, Zazi, are you guys ready, or do you guys still need uh, maybe a few more minutes? But for me, if I can test. Oh uh, yeah, good test. Yeah, that'd be cool. Now is it? Um. So you guys are ready, right? Okay. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So if our speakers are ready, then. Uh, okay. So um, assalamualaikum and uh, good evening. For those who have joined, the uh, talk will be, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, hope everyone's doing fine. So um, my name is Azim, and I will be uh, the moderator for today's talk. So I bid everyone a very warm welcome. Um, I bid Brian, Zazi, and also Ashton, and also um, Miss K. Uh, we also have some tutors and uh, lecturers from other universities. So thank you for joining us uh, tonight. Um, before we begin, I would like to go ahead and um, invite uh, Muhammad Hilmi to recite the du'a. Amin, 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 alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin, wa salatu wa salam ala shrafi amin, salim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmin. Allahumma innaka khalqul azim, innaka sabi'ul alim, innaka ghafur rahim, innaka rabbul arshil azim, innaka rabbul yudhul karim. Ya Allah, engkau lah yang mempunyai segala kepujian, engkau lah yang berhak menerima segala kepujian, engkau lah yang berhak menerima segala kesyukuran, engkau lah yang memiliki segala pemberitaan, di tangan engkau segala kebajikan, kepada engkau lah kembali segala urusan. Allahumma ya karim ya rahim. Cucurilah rahmat dan rahimmu ke atas majlis yang diadakan pada hari ini. Berkatilah ia dari awal hingga akhir. Ya pa'alu liman yurid, kami juga memohon perlindungan daripadamu dari segala perkara yang boleh mencacat celakan majlis kami dan daripada segala perkara yang menarikan kami dari perbuatan kepadamu. Kepadamu jua kami serah segala urusan kami. Abbana alaika tawakkalna wa ilaika anabna wa ilaika al-masir. Abbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azab al-nar wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alam Amin, amin ya rabbal amin. So, thank you Hilmi for signing the du'a. So, to start things off, I'm going to give like a short introduction of our speakers. So, our speakers today are Ashan, Azazi, and also Brian from Round School. And uh, I'm sure you guys have come across their Facebook page or either their um, Instagram page. Um, so it, they were created as a platform that celebrates uh, diversity um, in ways of learning and practicing architecture. So maybe um, today, uh, Zazi, Ashan, and Brian can actually address on maybe what kind of diversities and um, what are the other ways uh, what are these other ways to learn and also practice architecture? Um, so yeah, well, without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Zazi, Ashan, and Brian from Round School to begin our awaited talk for this evening. So yeah. Um, hi guys. Hi. Uh, this is Ashran. Uh, I think I'm waiting for my my buddy uh, Zazi and and Ryan. Uh, oh. I think Zazi is here. Uh, yeah. 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 Z Zazi, you want to start? Ah, uh, Brian is here. Hi. No, I'm unmuting my mic. Sorry for that. No, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Full screen now. Uh, not yet. Belum lagi. Can okay. you see the? Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Good, good. 
Okay. Uh, good, good, good night, everyone. Uh, so we are on school. Uh, Zazi, Ashran, and and Brian. So for tonight, uh, we are going to pretty much explain a little bit right, and probably share what we've been doing, you know, for the past year or so, and some we believe in, and probably we try to to do. Or section, which is the introduction part, the knowledge and cultural production uh, uh, section, and then the role of the in between, and then towards alternative platform, and finally probably maybe a Q and A uh, session lah. Okay, so non school is not a school and never pretends to be one, and probably it's not the idea of creating another school where you know you guys would leave your school and <laughs> attend this school that was never so the idea is to probably create another platform talking about in between school and and practice and and you know the public realm and whatnot lah. so this is a uh, uh, you know, office space but of course Probably be the, the the normal uh, kind of situation that we have now, uh, And uh, you know, probably uh, you know, nothing much to uh, what we can say that probably we have experienced teaching and for fifteen years or so, lah, Right. Um, Okay, so straight away on uh, the first part, which is talking about the alternative. Uh, the alternative that we mentioned probably the cultural production. Lah. Of course, when you talk about knowledge, uh, uh, knowledge on things, and, and probably, uh, let's see, on the left side, uh, uh, Zazi, I think maybe you can try to switch off your camera. It's a bit lagging here. Try lah, try. But 2K probably is a bit. No. <laughs> I hope it's better in terms of my voice. Hello. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, here is to uh to have uh, a group of people. Talk about things, and probably uh until uh, no, like now even knowledge has become something that is quite quite uh. A lot, there's a lot of lies and it has become something that is quite, uh, you know, dogmatic. You know? The idea of, you know, how education is about uh, exam and how, you know, to, to probably talk about uh, or probably to evaluate someone's intelligence through a certain system, which probably uh, sorry for interrupting, Sazi, but um, I believe it's still lagging a bit. Okay. Uh, is it very bad? Like you, you can't really understand what I'm saying, or what? Um, sometimes it's okay, but then sometimes it kind of cuts off. So. Okay. I don't know what other ways to. Um. Maybe I, I just try to push. Uh, okay, so on the next. Where I think this image talks about, uh, you know, 
the end of uh, modern architecture where somehow the ideals of, of modernist architects uh, you know, has no longer served uh, the public realm or, or the public uh, as a whole. Where I think throughout the idea of uh, modern architecture, uh, architects try to, uh, I wouldn't say try to take the role of God, lah, but probably we try to, you know, uh, Sometimes, uh, but I think most of the time it doesn't work, and I think this is the work of Nori Masaki that could be somehow being demolished uh, because uh, the failure of 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 the whole you know building and and the whole ecosystem, and we can see. Um, sorry, Zazi. Yeah, uh, it's a bit like it. Um, maybe you could try refreshing the page. Yeah. All right. Uh, can I continue? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. We talk about, uh, you know, I think throughout history, there's a lot of this resistance towards You know, 18th century or so, uh, where uh, the the massiveness and that you know in our own tradition, basically, kita masih tak. tradisi yang yang begitu sempurna macam contoh kita banyak banyak kali membincangkan tentang idea of si belum menjumpai satu uh, cara untuk uh, define bagaimana sepatutnya kita membuat uh, seni bina di uh, Nusantara ke? sebab masih banyak lagi idea kepada vernacular pastiche ataupun modern. So, uh, it masih lagi uh, tak berapa clear lah uh, sampai sekarang in terms of tradition. Uh, dan kalau kita lihat macam uh, in terms of the West kan, eh, macam Puerto Mas ni is actually uh, another version of Bahau that you, you conduct an architect And if you look into a modern and and uh, offices, for instance, this is Le Corbusier's uh, one of his earliest uh, office uh, in, in in Paris. So you can see that you know it's still the same. Of course, now we have computers and you know giving instruction, and then you have all the you know assistant architects, senior architects, project architects. Uh, up to the intern. How we run and we practice architecture is still the same. And somehow, for practicing architecture and how the role of architect within society. So you can see in the architects uh, in Siam, they probably oppose the is probably no longer the way to go and we should you know, probably look into more of uh, the idea of architecture as uh, contributing to society, creating, uh, discussing uh, issues, uh, education and whatnot. So the next part where we talk about democracy and autonomy, so uh, of course actually uh, De Carlo uh, is an Italian architect. So uh, play a role in, in civil society movement, uh, can give a point, uh, opinion rather than just, you know, the one, uh, you know, uh, 
professional or designer that probably designed to solve uh, design issues or problem? Um, sorry to interrupt, Zazie. Um, but I believe uh, it's a bit laggy. Uh, so maybe um, is it okay if we could have uh, maybe a break for five minutes? Um, we can try to figure out. Uh, yeah, uh, but but I think I think probably it's it's the connection from my side. But probably I try to connect to another net. I'm, I'm very sorry for for this interruption. Oh no no, it's okay. Um, okay, okay. So. Is it okay if we have a break for five minutes and see, try to sort things out? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, Zazi, uh, have you tried um, uh, yeah. have you tried ex exiting the meet and then rejoining it? And rejoin. Ah, uh, yeah, rejoin. Uh, okay. I can try now. Alright. Yes, I, I. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. And then. Um, uh, sorry everyone for the technical issues that were happening uh, at the moment, um, but for now I would uh, like to take this time to uh, read some rules about the talk session and also about the Q&A session. Um, so the rules is uh, that during the talk, um, the audience must have their mic off at all times except during the Q&A session. And uh, questions can be asked during the talk, but you may only type those questions in the chat box here. And for those who are watching through YouTube Live, you guys can also type your question there. Um, and during the Q&A session, uh, you guys can unmute your mic and ask a question directly to any of the speakers. Um, you could also... <laughs> uh, you could also go ahead and check out the socials of non-school, which will be also linked in the chat box. And you could also check out um, our Instagram, which is at Namada Studio. Uh, you can check out more details about our architects and also about the architectural design review. And you could also, uh, by supporting us, you can check out our merchandise that we just released. Um, it will also be linked in the bio on our Instagram page, so yeah. So has uh, Zazi rejoined yet? Oh, not yet. All right. So I guess we will about five minutes. We could wait for Zazi. Um, so again, um, on behalf of Jetmate, we are very sorry for the inconvenience.
So as you guys uh, saw from the video um, about our merchandise, uh, we have uh, three items, which are t-shirts, tote bags, and also phone cases. So you can get those t-shirts in two colors, black and white, as well as the tote bags. And the phone cases are available in two designs, and they have three colors, which are white, black, as well as um, honey. So a reminder, well, not a reminder, um, uh, just to let you guys know, if you could um, stay until the end of the talk, until the end of the Q&A session, um, we have something big to reveal to you all. It has something uh, to do with our Checkmate architecture review. So stay tuned after the Q&A session. I also would like to welcome Anchi Azlan, as well as uh, Anchi Jet. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, one of our speakers uh, is currently having some technical issues, so we are waiting for them. Hello? Hello, Zazie. Yeah. I I don't know whether it's better or not. But okay, um, uh, we, we had a discussion just now. So probably I'll just jump through the part where Brian would present. Uh -huh. And probably after that, we, we can we can have a discussion. But at the same time, if let's say, you know, uh, I, I can just go back to the earlier part of the presentation. Lah, uh, if that's okay. Uh, so, wait wait yeah. for a while. I think it's Zazie. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe you can try first. I think it's quite smooth now. If oh. let's say anything, Okay, I try. I try. Sorry again. I I'm chasing away all the all your viewers because of <laughs> no, it's no problem. <laughs> all right. Sorry to spoil your your night, lah, guys. Uh, no, sorry. No, no. With this online thing, you know, this kind of yeah, yeah, it's something that can't really be avoided. So it's okay. Uh, so the addition. You can see my screen, right? Uh, yeah. Do you want him okay. to send over again or start from here? It's okay. Wait, uh. Okay. Maybe I can just from um, if you would want to restart, then that's okay. We could extend the time a bit. Okay. Okay. I, I think the earlier part is basically just to explain about you know uh, the idea of knowledge. Uh, it's a different way of looking at education rather than something that is. About Um, sorry, Zazie, but yeah, it's starting to lag again, I think. Okay. Then I'd probably I just jump to the part where Brian would present, if that's okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, maybe we, I just play this video. Uh, so, yeah, Zazie, yeah. you, you can probably, uh, I will continue your, 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 your part over there just now, maybe. Okay, okay, wait. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, can you just help me to... So here, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 We we can start over here. Sorry for the mm. Yeah, mm. interruption. No, Is my here. Phone here? Okay. Yeah. I, I think the idea of how we are setting up the long school idea is basically uh what we are thinking and, and, and also embracing about all this is like um, creativity of anti-institutionalism. And one of these, all these uh, assembly in the 1968s and all these um, 
all these very provocative as activists and students that is like from the bottoms up and to try to promote that uh, to try to against about these institutions uh, ideas from the um, and, and trying to have more discourse and discussions and next does it next I already pressed thing for it to look. Can you see the slide? Uh, yeah. And and there is this uh, movement and there is this school in uh, London, it called Anti University of London in 1968. Some of the references and, and, and what we are throughout in setting up this platform that we are looking at things. And we would like to say that all these things is not something new. And, and something that is uh, non seen before. But, uh, perhaps in the past, the people are more daring and then more, more uh, enthusiastic in doing it. However, now it's, uh, uh, the, the more so called we are embracing about a freedom of speech, and also there are a lot of restrictions that we might get sued of through free and all these things, and to try to provoke and, and about uh, uh, channeling a discussions that to maybe for more more way of have a critical thinking and so on and so forth. Next. Can you see the screen? Um, uh, yeah. um, in 1965, uh, Robert Fiello is uh, create this uh, the school is an is called a non-school, and in fact, our so-called the non-school is a, um, something that um, is not something new as well. And this non-school is really a very abstract and very intangible of the idea of of led you to thinking about is like uh, uh, this so so-called is like um, thought ideas and also learning and teaching about um, in, within this uh, this school itself. Next. And other ideas of um, is uh, the education bazaar and the school without walls. Next. Because all these things, like for example, the education bazaar, right, is almost like is like treat, treating like about like by the name of bazaar, you will see that it's like something like very public. And in fact, like when you do a learning and studying, like in current trend, is like you have to go to institutions, it's like formalizations and everything, like, right? and all this creativity in a way that is like fueling all these things and all this like. The, the education bazaar and all this uh, have a uh, much more freedoms of creating a uh, very interesting idea that is uh, slowly, slowly that is like, uh, uh, we see that it's like uh, slowly, slowly it's become lesser and lesser. So the idea of when we are setting up this uh, non school, right, we are more into uh, the role in between. We are thinking and talking about what our, our role as an architect, designer, lecturers, graduates, and students, what do we uh, to contribute? Are we only the architect that we only contribute with the tools of building building to voice up about the space of a public space? Are we the designers is uh, not allowed to, to create something that very uh, uh, public space is cause because we doesn't have a very professional qualifications? And are we lecturers is only uh, doing only teachings that is like prudent practice because we are so-called naming as an academic? or graduates because it's like you don't have a experience of 10 to 15 years experience so whatever you do is something that is a very um, not proper or maybe it's a lack of a fundamental uh, all these technical issues and all these things and students is your so-called very preliminary preliminary idea is something that is like something that is very childish which is like we think uh, the answer for it, it is not because we are trying to celebrate that all of these individuals can contribute uh, in their own ways. Next. And this is uh, almost uh, one uh, similar to one of the very beginning slides that uh, which, uh, Zazi was showing that is like in a school of this day is like trying to uh, make you like homogenize or generic in a way doesn't distinguish you with a very um, special on the way that how you think and thought. 
and because of the syllabus, because of like, something, the formalization thing that makes you become is that everybody must do this. And if you're not doing that, perhaps you doesn't get the qualification and all. So and what we would say that is like we are embracing is like this so-called is like all those like individual uh, uh, role that we are talking about it is like trying to create more ideas and more platforms and more projects right to have these things is like you can could collaborate uh, more together and from there the output of it you are thinking that it's like it could be a form of writings, drawings, buildings, innovations, and critics, and the form of a non uh, non architectural uh, building, solid thing. Uh, it could be a form of uh, uh, knowledge. And uh, what we are trying to do this is uh, towards this so called alternative platforms that is uh, we call it non school in a way that what you could see that is not is not a school. And how this thing is started in a way that is uh, through a series of like um, uh, project between uh, um, Zazi and Ashram, they, they started with uh, Studio Kaya and then they have this uh, so-called uh, very uh, interesting initiative called Network and they organize some of the events it's called Local Workflows and basically this is uh, an idea of like um, uh, something like a discussion between uh, regional practices Singapore, Indonesia and so on and so forth. And how um, other platform that uh, we as uh, together and Sazi, me and Ashran and some of the member uh, for Nazmi band and all this, we uh, have this another platform called Format. And Format is uh, basically is a, 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 a group of um, like-minded friends. We are setting up together and, and trying to have a discourse and discuss about all this um, Thing that we are interested and think that we feel that it should be um, uh, how to work and move forward and then the format is uh, basically we organize a very uh, uh, internal discourse with inviting few people and to join the sessions and talk about things and then after that is like from format and what we are moving on like three of us is like we think that it's like uh, these things is like went and um, things are unable to just uh, be talking and there's some actions and we decided to like from there move on to make this intangible idea to make it more tangible in this platform called non-school and it was started in last year to 2020 when is the most uh, uh, critical moment in a, uh, a mankind in a way and our idea is basically started with a very um, basic physical workshop and however, the situation push us into like uh, revisiting and reviewing of our all our way of like practicing because basically we are we are quite an analog person in between digital and analog. And however, is that uh, things are moving everything online, then we have to uh, look into all this online platform and organize the workshop. And from there, is like we have all this like by trying to connect all these are very individual and like-minded and interesting regional practices to trying to create and discuss about something about their practice and the way of their practice within our region instead of just looking in the, the western typology and our southeast asian regional typology and think that what is the outcome next and this form is, uh, is uh, Alimani, Domestici, Atelier Hoko, Dua Studio, and, and Saoyin. They are some of the participants, uh, uh, participate uh, workshop leaders for our uh, 2020 workshop. And also, we were also um, contribute in some way with some of the local initiatives, for example, R Plus from GDP, and in a way that to discuss and to talk about other things, try to continue it from a more uh, locally. And also regionally with uh, Rabun Sanja, which is uh, an initiative uh, by um, Andra Martin and his team to also um, in conversation with critical context, which uh, they are also doing similar thing. So what we are trying to say that here is uh, we are we are started small, for example, it's just an uh, um, individual and then continue with like a group of friends Then we grow and have more discourse in a way with uh, more local uh, initiative young and interesting then we are slowly slowly moving into a more regional so that this thing is like 
uh, some way that is like within our region, I think we have a, a very interesting, a very um, so-called uh, individual and platform as well, but it's just like uh, where we, yeah, uh, doesn't aware most of the time, but by doing this and then we found that it's like actually it's like we are not alone. So that is something that is very uh, glad and to see that and happy to contribute in such a way. Next. So, and here, and the second part, we will probably move on to the, our, um, Uh, this is it. You can move on to the, uh, the the slides. I think the video you can check on our our face our Facebook and YouTube uh, channel. Basically, what we are trying to show about this video is uh, how the people and the workshop leader uh, they run about the workshop in a digital manner, which is uh, in a way that is a, a very challenging um, and very interesting moment because the first task when we are given to them is uh, to conduct uh, a workshop in a specific location in Malaysia. They need to travel again and to run the workshop and things they are considered is a uh, usual site contextual and very tangible how do they investigate about certain issue within a very uh, surrounding of the site even but when things are moving online they have to reinterpret the whole thing the issues which is like it could be from architecture to, to non-architecture in a way for example alimani taught thomas dc they are um, based at bangkok but currently they are in um in Europe, they are teaching and what they are investigations of the workshop is they're trying to uh, challenge about things that is uh, non-human and they are using all these uh, uh, tools that is that uh, perhaps is quite a, a new thing for us like for example software called sansa and uh, very digital so, uh, scanning and tweaking and 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 reinvestigating about certain issue for example one of these uh, participants that is uh, trying to study about this pigeon, uh, the relationship of the pigeon and the CCTV within the context of uh, uh, in New York. So that is like how this um, pigeon itself is uh, in occupying about the space um, within a city because architects is where we always talk about all these people. But in our surrounding, there's an end, there's an animals that is good that is living around as well. Next. And the next. Um, uh, workshop leader, which is uh, uh, by Atelier Hoko itself, and they are based in uh, Singapore. They are, personally, they are very sensitive. They are not architect, but uh, they are, they are perhaps it's like from the product and, uh, and designer background. But they are very sensitive in terms of questioning things that sometimes uh, we feel like we are uh, architects that we are not that, like criticals in a way. So they are given like, a task to the, all the participants called a workshop on Zoom, within Zoom. So basically they are trying to investigate about uh, the context of sitting in front of the screen. How do you create another uh, spatial mapping? And the uh, interesting thing then during their workshop is like, they ask all the participants to like rendering about their space, moving about their space. I think sometimes like, we are very, uh, take it as granted. And we sort of like leaving our living space for 24 hours. But however, a lot of the, the corner that we thought that we are quite familiar, but and surprisingly, we are, we are quite strange to them as well. So I think two hours after the workshop, all the participants, I think they found something interesting about their own living in, in a certain way. And I would say that is that the, the outcome of the collage is more likely it's just a an investigation of that, like the, 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 the spatial. And Dua Studio is uh, another um, individual uh, two person, Adi and Dimas. 
they are based at, at Indonesia. They are very emerging practice and they are similar to Hong Kong. They are questioning about the, the idea of, of rain and to ask the participants to come out and study about rain and come up their own narrative and a story about this rain, how the rains drop, how the rains impact to the people, to the living, to your clothes, to your street, to your cities. And lastly, we have um, Saoyin, our homegrown, uh, um, I would say that is a, a very interesting uh, practice. And uh, Saoyin himself, is, uh, he studied about this, uh, this article by uh, Jane Jacob and his workshop is a uh, generators of diversity. And what he is saying that is uh, uh, studying from small age, shape and material, from a little thing that you are doing, right? It could make and grow a bigger impact to your society. He's basing on this so-called uh, memory of your childhood. Then he asked all the participants try to reflect, reflect and think about what's in your past, some places, and then try to find a way, perhaps, to improve it from the understanding of these articles by Jane Jacobs. And from there, we finish our workshop, which is last for four, four months or five months. And we just had our so-called retrospective event, which is a summary of the whole workshop on last month, uh, January. And currently what we are doing is like compilations of this booklet and to document it as a publication. This is aligned to what we are trying to say that is like documentation, archiving and writing is very crucial. And, and basically it's a reflection when you're looking at this, uh, this book itself, it's a reflection of these uh, leaders and our thoughts and our moment within this workshop. And we wish that this would be continued and, and could inspire in others to always like think about it, um, to have a really, really good um, records of this so that you could pass on to the futures. And lastly, I think uh, this, we will probably have a distribution copy in the future. And this is the final quote is uh, by Shet Hussein Alatas uh, from the Intellectuals in Developing Societies. What he said that is like, for one thing, the educational institutions of the country, at least for the last three generations, have not been geared to produce creative individuals, but rather to provide the certificates and qualifications needed to fill government posts. I think this quote is basically is a conclusion of what and very precise on point that um, he was uh, like to highlight and for you to think about it and to connect about uh, what we do and perhaps to share with us and to contribute whether how we could uh, improve and collaborate and work together with every participant or person who are listening together. And that's all for today's presentation. And once last time, we would like to apologize for the technical issues and we would like to take more on uh, Discussions, I think, and, and, and maybe that we perhaps to celebrate this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no worries about the, uh, the technical issues. I, I guess it was something that was um, unavoidable. Um, yeah. So, uh, thank you. Brian and also Zazi and Ashan for the uh, session, our session. So, um, I guess we can uh, start with our Q&A session, if that's okay with you guys. Yep. Yes. All right. Um, so if this marks the start of our Q&A session, I'm going to explain maybe the rules uh, again. Uh, so if anyone has um, anything to ask, you can unmute your mic and ask the speakers directly, or you could also type it in the chat box and we will read out uh, the questions. So yeah. If anyone has any questions, um, do ask. Um, hello. My name is Alisa and I have a question. Uh, why do you think that it's important for us to learn alternative methods of learning, especially when everything is so accessible through 
the internet and we can learn a lot from the internet. Okay, that's my first thing. Thank you. No, uh, yeah, maybe I, I, I don't know if I speak, you can actually. It's quite lagging. Yeah, that's why. Maybe Ash can answer this. Ash, you got any comment? Um, sorry, what was the question? Um, yeah, we with, with with um, I mean the internet and everything, right? So you have, uh, you, you have no limitation, right? You don't have uh, there's no boundaries, uh, in terms of I mean getting uh, knowledge, uh, anything lah. But I think what we want you, I mean, the student, maybe what we can advise here is, uh, yes, it, there's no limitation uh, getting all the information and knowledge, but I think uh, you should uh, be able to, to filter. I think that's the word. Lah. I mean, filter is important untuk, um, uh, because, of course, there's no limitations to it, uh, knowledge, but I think it's good to understand and to filter uh, which one, mana yang bagus, or mana yang, uh, of course, you, you, what, what's good, what's bad, right? So it's, it's important to filter things, lah. Because uh, I think mostly student, I think this is the uh, benda ni yang uh, agak kurang, lah. Because um, dia tak tahu nak filter yang mana. So dia tengok cantik, okay, that's it, absorb. But I think it's, it's good to, I mean, process filter, and process mencari itu is important. You you cari the right thing, you baca the right thing, and then you analyze. Then you can come up with your own your own uh, opinion lah. So, but I think it's 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 very important to have you your own opinion. So in order to to have your own opinion, of course you you need to cari lah. You need to to look for it. So that's why I think one of the important thing is. Uh, 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 mencari, filter, uh, and then at the end of the day, you can have your own opinion. So when you have your own opinion, um, whatever question I mean asked to you, I, I don't think you have any problem to 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 answer it, lah, mam uh, So uh, maybe Zazi and Brian they have their own I mean personal opinion on that. I think you can add on that. Yeah, I, I think that's quite relevant. I I don't have. I just want to uh, maybe uh, talk about it a little bit because like uh, the generation thing me is I I'm, I always said that is I um, I'm I'm born in this analog and digital manner is that I I fascinated about digitals uh um. The technologies and the internet and all that because it's uh, open the doors and at the same time i'm very uh in a way that is a uh, hesitate things are i'm i'm not quite familiar and i think because it's like i believe in your generations and and the affected person are very uh, daring and very uh into that so and and that is something that i think that is a uh, this internet and digital thing that is a uh, very powerful Powerful is the way that you need to able to know how to find and utilize it. And there are people are very afraid and talking about AI and the threat of it to the humankind. And because if I, if you worry because you cannot control, if you could control to make use and make good with it, I think you shouldn't have worry and to utilize it. In a way that you need a school to teach you to practice, and Tadao Ando in the way that is like he doesn't get through to the architecture school by travels, by personal experience. I think but he can do it in his age, in his time given like that. But we still need to have a formal education certificate to run through it to become an architect. So sometimes it's a little bit contracted in some such a way. So just use the tools uh, in the right way you do, you know. Um, I hope that, uh, siapa tadi? Alisa. So, I hope that, yes, 
it answer your your question lah. Yes, it did. Thank Hopefully. you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um, I believe there's a question that just popped up in the chat. Um, it's from Muhammad Hazim. Um, so he asked that, what is the idea or objective of creating a platform like non-school, which was mentioned to be a kind of like non-formal institution? I think I would like to say so is that when you look at this, uh, um, the way that it call it non-school, some people will take it as a resistance against and negative. But however, we would like to say that um, this so-called uh, 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 negative message that someone who took it, it could be turned into a positive way because by the time that you feel threatened, then you will be critically questioned or maybe not critically, but at least you provoke you to think about Am I doing something wrong? It's almost like trying to audit your own own way. But for us, we are not saying that is that uh, we are trying to be like something that is alternative that we're trying to resist and not working together. And we, as a platform, when you talk about platform, is that uh, should be open, and we are uh, always uh, uh, interested to work with different people and from collaborations and. We are not saying that to trying to uh, we are trying to say that is like how we create this is like we would like to think about a way that how are we working with the institution because from the institution point of view they have a lot of protocol system and thing that they need to follow sometimes and because we are a free body we are not credited by anything. So we have a lot of freedom to do something that is not uh, restricted. So as a third party, for example, as a student, you have a choice, options to think which one is relevant. Perhaps you can choose both. And then when you learn something from this so-called non-institution, non-school, and they are, they are, they are so-called the, the way of something workshop, for example, then use that knowledge, try to question and contribute back for your formal education so that you are become more knowledgeable. It's not like you are doing something that is like being taught, this is A, this is like how to practice. Because in, in the new generation, it's like there's no like ultimate way of practicing. In fact, in a law way, you're reading a law book, it seems a very uh, legitimate, but the law itself is like depend and subjective to the individual how to interpret it. Uh, very subjectively. So this is what we are trying to give a balance and, and bring to ground to the to the our so-called the, the generations and our our, our audience as well. Uh, I think in addition to that, uh, is in in I mean to summarize, we 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 are not tied up to any organization. I mean even our let's say our structure our workshop format is is very organic we are open to the leaders punya apa ni, brief or how they design the, the brief i think we are open to that or even up to the uh, apa ni, let's say um i mean as long as it's not against our belief and it's not against our religion lah, i think itu je kot. right brain Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I really want to add something, but I I'm not sure whether when I speak, you can actually listen to me. I, is it clear now? Yeah, yeah, uh, clear, yeah, clear, now clear. It's clear. Now it's clear. Okay, because yeah. you know I, I I've been doing some speed tests, you know, uh, <laughs> on the on the others uh, that just to make sure that you know which which uh, you know uh, you know my my connection is okay lah. Okay, I I I think generally you know or any other platform, you know, come and join our workshop because, you know, we are the best, you know. And I think the idea of any school or architecture school or architectural platform, it's not really about that. It's not about to compete who can, you know, provide better provide education. Better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because like like the image of that, you know, animals and, the, and then you, you ask the animal to climb the tree. Of course, if you're talking to a monkey, the, the monkey 
if you talk to the elephant, whether the elephant is very strong, but elephant, you know, very difficult for them to climb a tree. La. <laughs> so meaning to say you, 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 you enter, you know, your, your college or university with certain, you know, set of skills. And, and some of you are born or were born, you know, with talent of drawing, talent of conceptual ideas, talent of, you know, watercolor and whatnot, you know. And some are uh, very good in language. Some other things, you know. So I think the idea here is that the education system that we have, we somehow celebrate, uh, you know, a certain kind of skill. To be, uh, you know, uh, a good at even your your seniors, your your group of friends, you can identify who would be better in in public speaking, management, and there's a lot of this good designer, but you know, very bad in time management and project management. And, and I think that is very, very important for all of us to realize because uh, the idea of this uh, workshop, because uh, a little bit more, probably it's more like, like, probably like a summer school or probably like a research. Uh, so yeah, I, I, think, I think the idea of creating this, it's not just this platform, but probably to celebrate other platform, to celebrate other practices, practice that probably if you want to do that practice, you have time. You don't, yeah. you know, you don't let go of, of your, uh, you know, your your vision. Lagging years after that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, aku rasa kena panggil saya Fudin lah datang rumah kau chat. <laughs> Siapa saya Fudin? Saya Fudin Abdul lah, the minister. Oh. oh, okay, okay. Duduk sebelah ni buat. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to resolve that first before non-school lah kot. Your internet. <laughs> And then okay. you say that there's no non non network. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Um, Hello, hi. Oh, yeah. Sorry. yeah. My name is Alif. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Zazi, Ashran, and Brian. Um, in, in your opinion, uh, what kind of uh, tools or set skills that um, us as designer uh, need um, in this in this era or this generation to become more relevant? Um, okay, maybe I, I can start with that. I think it shouldn't be uh, macam to be more relevant kot. So, uh, and before that maybe uh, to answer the question is tools. Maybe uh, we talk about uh, thinking dulu kot. Berfikir. Berfikir ya. Eh? I think it's important untuk, untuk berfikir Uh, uh, and then apa ni question lah question menyoal so sometimes bila you start uh, um, apa ni uh, question and then maybe you can get some answers and maybe you tak ada answer pun but uh, at least you start to to question when you start to question if you have I mean you if you get some answers maybe it'll start to trigger you to apa ni Uh, untuk berfikirlah, thinking kan. So, uh, maybe a set of skills tu through process or through experience. So, uh, maybe benda tu later uh, when when you started working ke, when you have certain experience, maybe you gain, I mean, uh, and you you achieve certain, I mean, uh, a set of skills. Tapi I think maybe we can start Um, to to apa ni to, uh, the idea of uh, 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 questioning and thinking and making I think making tu pun is important because if just thinking and questioning without making pun I, I think dia akan ada macam uh, uh, 
uh, it's not they, they macam detached lah. It's not link, faham tak? So I believe that um, questioning, thinking, and making tu macam dia satu uh, satu line lah yang yang apa ni uh, saling berkait lah. Dia dia connected. Uh, so something like that lah. So I mean I mean that that is my 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 personal opinion lah. I think Jazzy and and Brian pun lebih kurang uh, sama and then maybe they they can add into that lah. Yeah, I think it's like curiosities and doing is the important thing. I think most of the times, like everybody is like born with a talent and specific thing. And in fact, for myself as well, it's like I have this issue as well personally that I confess to you guys. Like also, it's like doing is something that is a lot of us is try uh, to uh, to hesitate because it's like you thought that we, I need to be very uh, critical thinking then only like uh, produce something, then so-called is like in the end, is like the perfect artwork, uh, artwork or uh, outcome, right? But however, sometimes it's like, you don't need to think too much, just do it. Because the more you do, the more critical you are reviewing and revising about things that you are, you, you've done, so that you could uh, improve it, rather than you only like think about like, 10 to 20 years, then only you do one. It doesn't mean that, Either way is uh, right or wrong, but perhaps sometimes it's like uh, you have to balance yourself uh, a little bit on that. Mm, but don't don't jangan macam main hentam je lah. But I think uh, it's certain people they 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 learn through the the hard way, kan? So certain people they memang dah very talented, memang I mean super lucky pun ia juga. But then macam it depends. So maybe at 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 one point macam you need to to apa ni you you kena tahu uh, maybe your weaknesses dengan you punya strength lah so that you can move forward and focus uh, benda yang you nak you nak tackle or benda yang you nak push something like that lah um yeah zazi I think uh, Zazi, I think he left the meeting, maybe because of the connection. Oh yeah, okay, there he is. He rejoined. <laughs> Are you How trying to for Zazi? Wait, you need a pen mat, Zazi. Maybe we can proceed for next questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, there is but, yeah. I like, but I like your attitude, Zazi. Don't give up. <laughs> All right. Uh, next it, question. Um, so we have a question in the chat box. It is from Hazwan, uh, an open-ended question. Uh, so how do you guys think about the relevance of examination or tests in architecture design-based courses in university? Or should we lean towards application-based format instead of a definitive-based learning? Brent? Application based format. Could, could explain a little bit of application based format. What does it mean? Um, as well, you tie off. As one, maybe you can um, uh, explain a little bit. Yeah. Um, oh. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I, maybe I just interpret on, on my own way. If anything wrong, maybe you just uh, let me know. I think definitely is um, uh, assent based and test is a model that is like uh, to give you like accreditations uh, and satisfactions of things that you are you are learning, and perhaps to grant you something like so called you are completed in certain stage is a uh, self satisfactory. And also, as a uh, both side, in the person who organized an institution who created it, and also self satisfaction for yourself to feel like you achieve something. To be honest, are uh, you really achieve something throughout that? It's like uh, you have to question yourself. And I would say that it's like uh, to practice an architecture in the past it, through apprenticeship. Apprenticeship is that uh, you have to go through a certain process, then you feel you are okay or the master feel we are okay, 
then you're okay. And you need to go through the process of like uh, discovery after that as well. And there are no these so-called certifications that we are so uh, so uh, celebrate in some way. So I think the certifications in some is some way is more like a, a product of capitalizations as well. So I'm okay with application space if I say it's something that you learn if you are able to apply because by then you could celebrate or you could invent certain things that not typically because I teach you math, mathematics or architecture. It doesn't need to uh, detect you to become an architect. You could be a, 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 a software designer or, 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 or an artist or anybody. But if you got a certificate and that certificate in the end will be uh, used by someone or your parents or somebody to say that you have to practice architect because you spend so many times years and use that money to study that. Now you got to say you don't do architecture. Uh, architect, what do you do? You know, that sort of thing. So that's uh, how I interpret. Does it? Live from the, inside the car. Ah, uh, hello. I hope the connection now is better because now I'm in a more civilized space than than when. Ah. Uh, Okay, uh, I don't know, the question was about uh, examination, is it? Uh, the yes. relevance of examination as in architecture, uh, or should we lean towards application-based format instead of definitive-based learning? Oh, meaning, meaning you enter into architecture school without examination, is it? Is it? Okay lah, but but I think I think generally if you want to talk about you know examination, I think it's it's again lah, it's again it's about the system, and I think uh, what non school wants to do is basically not to say that we should not go to uh, school and get a degree. You should do that. I mean, like nowadays with the competition and whatnot, you need to have at least a degree lah. It's not a master or a PhD or whatnot or even part two, part three and, and stuff lah. Uh, but the point is that. Uh, you should not measure your success or your knowledge through all these things. Uh, meaning to say, a, a person with with a master's is better than a person a person who are, are graduated as part one. I think what is important is that uh, whether you know how to use your knowledge and to apply that in you know in any form. And I think uh, the example of what uh, some from Known to Skill did mention is that from their own group, there's a lot of you know some of these friends. You know, later on, uh, practice as you know designers and and whatnot. Not necessarily you have to be an architect. And being an architect is not the measure of your success. It's about how you make use of your architectural knowledge, and to translate that into whatever that you can do uh, to contribute to the society. And uh, again, to to probably uh, highlight a bit on on the presentation uh, that we have just now. So the idea is that if you have a a, a platform which is not a school, a platform that celebrates this idea. Because I think nowadays, uh, there's a lot of people, like, like uh, even some dimension also, like uh, Kevin Matlo, uh, there they are great names, but a lot of people want to learn from them. But you don't have the opportunity to learn from people like this, lah, or some other people. Lah. Okay, uh, even uh, other than them, let's say like, like Pudu Bikin ke, or Teta Wowi, that's, that's always a limitation for people to enter this place and learn from them. Uh, so probably by doing this, you have a glimpse of that. So you imagine, let's say we can create a, create a platform, okay, open create. So anyone can present their design in front of, you know, uh, you know all these uh, probably famous designers, if you can say that. So not to say that because they are famous, but we want to have, like, say, a, another dimension, another uh, point of view from, from their point of view, or probably they can guide us, uh, can give uh, their command and whatnot, so that we can somehow improve the design, uh, and and not to say that, because I think I think I, I experienced that uh, as well. For instance, uh, with your own students, right? You you've been you know uh, criticizing their work for fourteen weeks, but su suddenly someone from the outside 
come during the the, the jury, yeah, uh, the final jury, and then points out something that you did not, you know, you missed out throughout the session. And I think design is about that, to have a lot of, you know, point of views from other people. But at the end of the day, it's not to please them. It's, it's about almost the same uh, with, with this story or this fable uh, about an old man, uh, a boy and a donkey, right? So they masuk satu kampung, people say that why why you are not using the donkey? Why are you walking? And, and then masuk satu tempat lagi, uh, why you know the old man is on, on the donkey and then the, the... So whatever that you do, if you try to please other people, uh, there's no ending to, to that. But what you need to do is that, when people give criticism to you or people criticize your work, you have to back up your, your information, your research and try to justify that. So I think, you know, uh, I'm not sure whether it's still within the same question, but I think the idea is that talking about knowledge, it, regardless of examination, regardless of whatever method in the institution, at the end of the day, you need to have passion in what you do. So. If you enter architecture school, you have you need to have that passion to learn architecture or, or, or architecture as a knowledge. And then later on, if you want to co to do your own business or whether you want to be a, a I don't know, like a, like a teacher or a politician or a farmer, it doesn't really matter. But it, it's about how you want to use the knowledge. Lah. I'll just end there probably to open up to other questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sazi, for answering the question. Hello, can, can I ask? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, um, perhaps you might share, uh, Zazi. Um, what do you think about our, our formal education? Okay? Is it um, as important as kita perlu ada juga non-formal punya education? Non-formal education? I think it's a combination yes. of both lah. Because uh, the formal education, memang it's it's already a system, kan? It's a system you can't really avoid. So you you not kerja, of course you need at least CJL, cert or, or diploma. So that is the system. You can go through the system, but you have option untuk let's say uh, sometimes people uh, learn through macam street, kan? Street smart punya apa ni? Uh, uh, student, I mean, uh, businessman ke apa. I mean, it, I think for me it's a combination of both. So, jangan, I mean, don't listen to macam all this negative macam, okay, jangan ambil part three, uh, okay, tak payah diploma dia cukup. No, I don't, I don't agree. We don't agree with that lah. I think uh, you need to go through the formal education and at the same time, you try to search or try to cari dig in i mean all these uh, interesting uh, practices or interesting uh, i mean uh, form of i mean uh, getting knowledge macam tu lah it's not it's not don't limit yourself or don't uh, macam okay this is the absolute uh, way to to success i mean to 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 be successful so uh, yeah i think that's my my opinion um, yeah uh non-formal education and formal education basically if you ask me honestly my own personal opinion uh you know it's open because you can see like people for instance i give you like uh, for instance Cik Hatta from kuantan he's not trained as an architect he has a degree architecture he's from from the art they bought sculpture they bought macam -macam from artist lah painter but then throughout experience, they learn construction, they learn macam nak buat uh, and then slowly they learn what drawing, in terms of architectural drawing, learn the skills. But they understand certain things. Knowledge from the art world yang dia boleh bawa into architecture and in the end of the day, they boleh build even better design than most of architects. Uh, I think the problem with, uh, uh, you know, most of people is that you, you are too constrained within your own discipline. Macam when you are an architect, so, you know, you, you just learn about architecture, you just read books about architecture, but you, you you know, you don't really go beyond that. You don't look into, let's say, references from the art, you don't look into references from, uh, you know, uh, sastra, ke, from technology and, and stuff like that. And I think even now, it's even more critical because now is that if you have the internet and you can listen to a lot of all these other alternative talks. So, now is the matter of how you want to equip yourself, how you want to improve yourself, to add value to yourself, so that 
if you if you become an architect, you can become a very good architect, damn good architect. If you if you you know decide not to be an architect, it's okay. But you have the architecture knowledge. You have other knowledge uh, as well. So talking about you know formal and non-formal, of course you you enter school and do the formal education. Uh, you know if if you you want uh, a more secure you know uh, way lah. But of course, there are some people who are not fortunate enough to enter, you know, formal school. But I think we can we can grow this even even more. For instance, you imagine let's say non school, we can get you know all these great designers to apply, and then we can go to kampung kampung, for instance, huh? uh, or maybe not our platform, maybe your own platform, maybe UITM when you're a student, ke apa, uh, you can pergi ke get get mara whatever, then you can teach all these student ke children ke even uh, after SPM ke after PMR to learn to do sketchup ke, to learn, to do uh, drawings ke, lukisan technical. So I think we should look into that direction where we can contribute to the to the broadest of people so that more people can understand art, design and architecture. So that's what, that's how you develop, you know, all this idea of knowledge and cultural production. So that would be my answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I actually uh, have a question myself. So, um, so you guys have uh, you know conducted workshops, curated workshops with um, other studio leaders from um, Dua Studio, Animalai, Domestic Sai, and so on. Um, so, you also said that you let them uh, freely design uh, the brief, you know, an organic brief. Um, my question is that. Uh, do you um, let the studio leaders um, design uh, the brief completely, like just let them design it on their own? Or are there in certain parts, do you also work with them on? And um, between the briefs of all the studio leaders, is there something that you guys keep, uh, how would I say, systematic in a way? Yeah, right. And I think I would say that yeah, we are give them almost like totally control. And of course, in the process, it's like every person when they give a brief, it's like, what is your brief? The brief is no brief. What is the workshop about? It's about non-school workshop and things like that. So things are a little bit of like unfamiliar. And also it's like, because everybody is like quite uh, follow in certain things in a way to practice and things, right? Then you give a totally freedom. When you don't have freedom, you ask for freedom. When you got freedom, then you suddenly you say, it's like, uh, uh, what should we do? So, but however, throughout the process, we um, always encourage and the leader say that it's like, actually you could do anything you want. And uh, we have discussions and but from our part, we really, really have little contributions in terms of their brief. But however, we only giving a certain like, format of like the, the, the schedule and recommended like hours and times like, and the outcome which is like we want to document as a publication. This is from our part. We are more like a um, curator rather than the designer of that in a way. Yeah. Yeah, if I were to add also, yeah, I agree. Uh, basically, uh, because you see in, in architecture school, especially in Malaysia, right? So there's, there's a lot of this uh, limitation in terms of land requirement. So we are not against that, but, but we understand the system is, was, you know, was created because to measure a certain uh, competency or understanding or certain level of, of, uh, of knowledge in architecture. Lah. So when, when we conduct this workshop, of course, we are more like much um, like a football manager, lah. You, you try to get the best players that you can. And uh, this, this selection or this uh, curatorial process is basically, you know, to, to really look into their works and try to understand, you know, uh, and try to, to find uh, interesting practices that has like a certain agenda or an ideology. So if you look into, you know, most of international uh, school or, or in, in the Western country, in Australia or in, in America or in UK or Europe, so uh, most of the design studio would have like an agenda or a unique system. Katala Orani is more interested in social and culture. Uh, this unit would talk more about, you know, emergence technology. 
uh, this unit will talk about materiality. So then, that uh, unit would be more focused. The other set of readings, the other set of you know, references, the other set of things that you want, you need to discuss, the other seminar, this series. So for us, uh, I think we don't really have that, number one, because we we have lack of uh, all this, because macam, macam orang, basically, uh, of, course, uh, of course, people who, who study over there can, can verify this. Lah. But basically, the idea is that you panggil all these people to teach in the school because of their expertise, because of they have certain ideology or they, they have certain agenda uh, when they are designing, you know, uh, in their offices. And we want them to somehow share that process with the students. Bukannya nak, nak tengok budak ni draw tangga betul ke tak. That, that one can be part of, of, of education and knowledge. You need to draw staircases. You need, but if let's say this approach of this particular office is looking at all these corridor spaces and staircases as a common spaces or public spaces that people can interact rather than just as circulation. So that is already like a, like an approach. So our role here is that we, 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 we seek into all these offices so that they can come up with this kind of thing. Uh, of course, we have a few discussions. And I think, yeah, because because they are also very experienced and, and very good at that. So when they presented what they want to do, I think we are just okay with that. Uh, and I think what is important is that to have that systematic, you know, week one, what do you need to, you know, discuss about week two, week three. So I think for us, it's about more to manage that in this one. But I think uh, in the future, we are open to that kind of collaboration, especially if, let's say, we can have a collaboration with universities, let's say, Taylor's girl, UITM girl. So then we can have collaboration with the with your lecturers, uh, with the students. Katala, this unit suddenly we can have another office to also, uh, you know, uh, join uh, and and be part of the studio. So we you will have the pre session together so that you can you can share the knowledge together lah. So rather than yeah. always saying that it's, it's one way that that probably all the practitioner would come to the school just to to look into all these yeah. uh, very practical things. So I think I think that's the the idea behind it lah. Yeah, so it's it's it's, it's macam formal punya requirement, lamp punya requirement, we still follow the lamp requirement, but at the same time, uh, we have the alternative punya punya uh, apa ni option lah, macam okay non school uh, tie up with one studio, let's say final semester punya studio, okay non school dengan uh, unit ni okay study about this uh, issue or this approach. And then benda yang nak kena meet the LAM requirement, we follow. So again, you dapat uh, the combination of both lah kan. So macam the formal way of course and yang non-school way ni, okay satu lagi ni. So macam, yeah, the, the point is we are not trying to, to, to I mean against the, 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 the system or the, the, apa ni, institution lah. But I think it's, it, I think we should have, I mean both or, or combination to, to move forward lah, something like that lah. Alright, uh, thank you. Um, hello, I have another question. Uh, based on your previous workshops, do you think it's effective, especially since we're a very hands-on course, as I believe it was carried out online, and perhaps you can share about the out outcome of the workshop. Okay, that's my question. Um, I, I mean, initial idea there, we want to do a physical workshop in KL. And then we have a set, I mean, I mean, the set list, I mean, the, the uh, I mean, the leaders that already agreed uh, with the physical workshop pun, uh, I think, uh, uh, I think around eight, six to eight lah. And we ended up with four because online punya punya format so we 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 quickly adapt with the situation and then we uh, we continue uh, to do the workshop even though uh, we can't do it uh, physically uh, that that was the the that's why we shift to online um and then um apa tadi soalan dia alamak uh, the effectiveness of it. Effective. Yes, there are the pro and cons. Yeah. Uh, kalau, I mean, the, the maybe advantage there online, you, you have, uh, I mean, participant, uh, participant across, 
I mean, not not just the region. We have, I mean, participants from Australia, New York, Mexico, even uh, uh, Spain. Uh, that's the advantage lah to get, macam, I mean, it's it's is, uh, apa? There are the variety in terms of the mixture of the participants lah. Uh, it is good. Uh, I mean, in that because of the online, but I think. Um, uh, because we can't do physical punya workshop, there are the, uh, some restriction lah because we you can't interact. I mean, maybe the, the original punya format is just four or five days, very intense, and then you 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 have certain outcome. Uh, so when it comes to online, so there are the different punya punya outcome lah. So uh, I think for for me personally, uh, it's 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 okay to. Uh, uh, we we decided to do I mean to start with online, and then of course we we still have the the potential to to conduct the physical workshop if 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 uh, everything is okay and outcome there so far I think um, because it's just our first time again so much I think the outcome uh, okay uh, yeah okay yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brent, if I want to also add, sorry, I, I answer a lot of questions because just now I, I'm stuck. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot really present my slides then. So, lepas gram. Uh, lepas gram. Let's see lepas gram dalam kereta. Uh, hmm. Okay, uh, I think in terms of the effectiveness, eh, sebenarnya I, I think for us, we, 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 we probably, we can adapt, uh, I, I think we can quickly adapt to situations. I think uh, I think you guys also experience you know doing uh, design studio online. Of course, masa mula-mula tu, eh mana boleh nak 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 buat uh, design studio ni online. Of course, it's very difficult, it's very challenging. But uh, the more you think about it, when you have limitation, when you have constraint, you tend to be more critical. Uh, you tend to be more creative. You tend to find ways how to produce the best that you can you know produce. So. In the sense that, for instance, when we are in the situation, originally we want to do, you know, a physical workshop. Everyone comes to KL, and then we will explore the city. Uh, and then, you know, even though they are international, you know, participant ke, international uh, workshop leaders ke, and then everyone comes to the city and celebrate the city, look at the vibrancy of the city, feel and smell and whatnot lah, taste and whatnot. But now you 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 can't do that, and because of that, I think the workshop leaders also are very uh, probably creative in creating the, the design brief for the for the workshop and I think in terms of the effectiveness for instance the particular one uh, which is Atelier uh, Hoko uh, workshop is about Zoom so maybe all this while there's already an, an online platform but you never thought of thinking of doing a research on Zoom or Google Meet or whatever lah kan? so how the, 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 the relationship when, when you have when you need to sit for a very long time in front of your laptop, phone or whatever, tablet ke, and then how that would, would give an impact to your own personal space, your own domestic space. So I think in terms of the effectiveness, I think, yeah, some of them also like like myself lah, you know, sometimes you have a very bad connection, then, you know, you are lagging and, and very difficult for you to me. But, you know, there's, there's always, you know, ways to, 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 Sometimes, let's say lah, during the day, uh, masa you present your work, that's suddenly you are very lagging. But you know, they, some of them would email back to the to the workshop leaders, and they would communicate differently and whatnot lah. But I think what is important in education, sebenarnya kalau ikut kan, uh, you already have the internet, you already have the the whole world in your devices. But you need someone to guide you, what to look for, you know, who uh, who uh, which design to search for as a reference. Uh, to look at you know uh, this design or that design, so I, I think that is important when when you listen to more people talking about architecture and design and uh, the built environment, then you will have more vocabulary to start to find yourself, and I think that's the whole you know purpose of it because if not you know the internet is already there. I remember you know uh, talking to some of my previous students when I ask for references, they always reference to yeah tangga the hostel lah. Upper entrance, the Kayo ICT Mall, uh, you know, they, they reference to things around them most of the time, even though you have the internet to show, let's say, the best example of things. But, you know, it's about finding, you know, uh, the right keywords and the right things to, to refer to. So, 
So, you know, uh, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it. Like, talking about effectiveness, it, it depends. And I think uh, for what we have done, of course, there's a lot of room for, for improvement. But we've tried our best and for, for the workshop leaders also. And I think by publishing uh, continuously, then we can see that, that the, the growth, lah, if let's see whether we can get, you know, better and better uh, for the years to come. Oh, understood. Uh, I would like to add to my question with another question. Based on your experience in teaching, what do you think young students lack of? Okay. Dia tak ada, there's no such thing as student lack of apa-apa. I think um, semua student sama je. In, I mean, sama in term of uh, which generation, 20 tahun lepas, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, sama je. And different generation, different obstacles, different uh, challenges kan. So I think sama je. I mean the, the situation different itu je yang 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 membezakan. But I think um, apa ni? Um, sometimes it's not it's not it's not the student kan. Kadang-kadang the the management, kadang-kadang the lecturer. Tapi uh, I think uh, I mean we need to to kita kena sedar lah macam let's say okay we 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 can we we notice that this student dia macam okay the weak, the weakness ah uh, dia maybe design ni okay dia dia macam a, a bit a bit a slow sikit but then uh, dia tak ada masalah i mean i mean looking for information i mean analyze benda and then differentiate uh, which one is better solution blah 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 i think that that part maybe uh, the role of lecturer tu um, uh, should be macam should be the first thing lah so they, they, I think it's important for for the lecturer to identify of course lecturer as a lecturer you can identify student ni ability dia apa this student dia punya strength apa this student dia punya weakness apa so I think you you as a lecturer you can start to tackle from there lah rather than macam okay uh, uh, okay this semester uh, you heard uh, someone the other lecturer cakap okay this student okay eh, budak ni memang true ah this 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 student memang weak but i don't think you should i mean you should uh, apa ni ambil that that uh, statement and then okay just just assume that this student memang the problem but i think it's it's, it's very good as is is a challenge for the for the lecturer to i mean to shape the student so that from from um, to to be a better a student lah rather than I mean assume that okay student ni dia ada lack of something dia tak pandai design or, or, or things like that I think uh, it's not fair to blame the student lah that that is the first thing and then second thing maybe uh, as a lecturer as well I mean we are part-time teaching so I think uh, lecturer pun kena equip or maybe kena uh, ready lah uh, with, with a lot of uh, 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 information, uh, ideas or, or approach to make sure that the student ni macam you can shape the student to become a better person first and then maybe a good architect second. So that's my, my point. Brian, you want to say something? I think it's uh, on point. No, no, no comment. Okay, I, I, I just add a little bit. Huh? Uh, I think if you Google online, uh, there's a report card of Richard Rogers when he studied in the JA. So in that report, I think it's a fourth year report card or something. In that report card, the lecturer check up Richard Rogers me is not very good in drawing, not very competent in this, not very competent in that. And and you know who Richard Rogers is now lah. Uh, so the point is that for some people, they are very good in school because they are uh, they 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 are okay with the system. They can follow the system. Uh, you know, and sometimes the kesedaran tu datang awal. You know, you masuk university, you know that you need to perform. Uh, if not, you have to, you know, you tak nak susahkan orang apa or what not lah, right? But for some people, after they work only, let's say, one year or two years or three years or what not, then only you realize that, okay, this is what I, 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 I need to do and I need to equip myself and from there they improve. And sometimes they they work uh, or they intern in a, in a very good office and they learn a lot in office. For some, they learn a lot in school. So for me, as long as there's, there's this intent of 
uh, getting and acquire more uh, to acquire more knowledge, then you would feel you know improve yourself. And I mean, like, for 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 us as well, we, we're not saying that we are you know the best teachers or whatnot. You no, know? uh, of course, I think that's far from that. I know, like, like most of my students wouldn't get an A or or let's like, say the best design or whatnot. But I think what is important is that for you to find the best potential in the students. And uh, of course, you always listen to some of the lecture. I wouldn't say all lah. Okay, best you need to work betul lah. Best Best unit, apa, best yang sebelum you ni pun tak teruk macam best you. you know? That kind of thing. And then, yang sebelum tu pun, maknanya apa, yang the first generation tu is the best generation or what? But, uh, I think the point is that, uh, just, just forget about that lah. I mean, the point, uh, in terms of education and acquiring knowledge, there's always room. If let's say you, you have the kesedaran, you have the, the, the moment where you realize that you need to equip yourself and if let's say you are lacking in this part of the area in, in your profession, then you would try to improve it. And of course, uh, that would not, uh, that would take you, like, let's say, a longer time for you to equip yourself. Lah. And and for us also, it's the same. And for, for people out there who are practicing, it's also the same. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think we just need to equip ourselves and expose ourselves more. What is good if, I, I, I can assure, let's say, you are in the 40 or 50 year now. If you look back at your work in the second year, then also you will say, I don't know what you work could do. So, it's, it's always like that, you know, uh, when, when you are even better at doing that thing, then, then you start to revisit back, then you, you would probably say that, you know, uh, you are better now. And probably that's better. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I would like to add. Can I ask? Um, talking about uh, Dan tadi tu. Um, in your opinion, um, what is the macam macam mana architect ni should be? What is the role of architect? In your opinion. Macam mana architect ni? Macam mana patutnya kita macam The role. Yes, yes. The, the right role of architect. Yeah, the right role lah. Basically. The right, macam, yes. Right. Ha, macam architect yes. ni, the ideal architect ni macam mana sih? Okay, that's the question lah. The ideal architect lah. Hmm. Okay, thank you. It's very hard to say lah ideal tu tak ideal ni. But I think if you want to be an architect, you try to be the best architect that you can be lah. You know? And to be the best architect, so you have to to have like a certain uh, you know kayu uh, ko lah for for yourself or or measurement uh, in terms of what is what is good and what is bad. I think uh, most importantly, when when you look around, especially in in, in the city ke, in the country ke, kan, when you look at buildings, when you do you look at spaces, kan, you can definitely see you know the good and the bad in 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 the design and in architecture. And I think for, for to be you know, a good architect, if let's say you want to talk about architect lah, it's always about trying to be like like a good, uh, you know, citizen, good human being and whatnot lah. Being good ni bukan maksudnya macam your design is the the most, you know, aesthetically pleasing ke, you know, the, the most fanciest ke. That is not the, the idea of good. The idea of good is that whatever that you do can give good to other people, can contribute to the society. So even though if you are designing a banglo for a very rich person, probably you can design something within that banglo which somehow can do good for, for, for that particular you know household or by designing that house in such a way that you know, other people can gain goodness from the effect of the design. Uh, meaning to say, kalau you design apa, uh, like a facade ke, uh, ataupun there's an element that when you design something that would not block the the, the neighbors ke, if that's what, that one is you're talking about architecture per se lah. Other than that, I think, other than buildings, we, we should talk about this non-buildings element. We need to say, architect, kalau you ada opinion on something, you have to voice out. If you have opinion on, uh, you know, let's say on the public transport system, you have to voice out. So I think architect terlalu places in terms of you just want to deal with things within your own profession je. So, if you have opinion, you you have, uh, you, you need to voice out and you need to play a role uh, in terms of uh, giving information about the 
built environment, the right information, and also to contribute in, in other areas as well with whatever knowledge that you have in architecture school. Meaning to say, in architecture, you belajar urban design, you belajar city planning, you know that probably building more highways is not the way to go, for instance. Then if you can do something about it, you can, you know, write anywhere or talk to people or, or you know, make decisions on that. Then you should use whatever knowledge that you have. Uh, of course, like our lecturer, uh, you know, Professor Tajuddin Rasmi, for instance, he is an academician. Uh, he's been writing a lot, very critical about uh, the architecture in Malaysia. And he, he, he is not, he's not the kind of architect who actually built a lot of buildings. I, I think he just built his own house. But he wrote about uh, educational facilities, educational building, uh, multiracial, uh, you know, uh, design of a mosque, uh, apa, uh, design scholar, uh, public housing and whatnot. So I think that is also important. We need to say if you run a practice, not necessarily you, you just need to do the things that the client asks you to do. So for instance, like no to scale in your work, there's a lot of this commentary work. So that is also another form of output of architecture that you can actually, you know, uh, produce and give to the people to contribute. Thank you. I think uh, you should, uh, the ideal architect to maybe to me, uh, you should know what you are doing lah. Faham tak? Because uh, you have certain belief, you have certain principles and then I think based on that concrete punya principle or, or, or belief, I think you know uh, what kind of, I mean, I mean approach ataupun uh, ways of how to tackle things lah. I think macam Fahmi Reza kan, he's a, I mean, a graphic designer, a, a activist, uh, all, all these things. So dia buat, dia buat benda dalam dia punya lingkungan je. And he's good at that. So, and I think he really know what he's doing. So whatever, uh, I mean, attack, I mean, came from, I mean, banyak angle pun, I think he can still macam uh, tepis or, or uh, try to solve benda tu because he know what he's doing. Faham tak? Because uh, I think that's a basic uh, basic thing lah. I think you kena tahu apa benda yang you buat. Kalau you tak tahu and then yeah I think certain people alah dia ni bullshit je macam ah. Then benda macam tu lah I think I think you should know what you are doing. Kalau you student okay apa benda yang the right thing to do as a student. Kalau you as a student you rasa benda tu is not it's against you, macam maybe you have certain opinion lah. Kalau macam things like that. I think you 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 kena tahu apa benda yang you buat lah kot. Ataupun dalam kata lain dia, you have, you need to have a very strong prinsip lah. Prinsip hmm. dalam kehidupan, prinsip dalam practicing, prinsip dalam design. So I think that's why uh, we mentioned about the idea of agenda ke so unit to ideology tu penting. Meaning to say, you believe in green design. Apa definition green design tu? Sebab semata-mata nak dapat GBI whatever index ke? Ataupun you really believe that this contribution, small contribution in designing your building more sustainable can contribute to the better environment, to, to a better world. So I think of course most of the time people will say that that's just you know rubbish talking about those kind of things. But if you really understand that and that is part of your principle, uh, your, your principle in, in, in design, so yeah, you should you should have uh, you should believe that and start to you know uh, promote that idea to other people. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, um, Ash, Brian, and Zazi. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, um, saya nak tarik sikit to our earlier conversation. Uh, mm. to the purpose of non-school lah basically. Okay. I mean for me after months of following non-school, I can see that uh, non-school circles around the idea of discourse, sharing and experience maybe to widen the set skills for the participants lah basically. Eh? So I wanted to ask uh, about how this course plays a very important role in students growth especially for architecture students and why if it's very crucial 
then why this course is not a definite culture in current generation of students? Uh, maybe especially for informal discourse lah. Maybe something like apa yang kita tengah lalui sekarang lah. I, I think I will start that first. I think uh, first of all, right? I think um, when you think about critical thinking, I, not not you lah, like, me also. When you think about, or I start to talk about critical thinking, critical discourse, critical this, critical that is almost going to hospital. It's very critical already, urgent. So what we are saying that this thing is like in, in an agency that is like but in a way that should be uh, generalized in a way. In a way the critical uh, discourse should be moved on to a more public discourse. So that the more this thing could be familiarized in terms of it, the more public have this mindset, then you will be critically questioning things. It's just like the, the issue of us is like we are lacking of that. And I uh, when somebody that you think they are very experienced, I uh, think that they are talk louder than you and give more reference to you, you just start to quiet because you think it's like he knows knowledgeable than me. And this is the thing that we, we, we will say that is like, for example, the question from one of the participants just now, I said, what are the students lacking of? I'm very afraid of students. What are the things that they have, the tools they have, the knowledge they have? You know, for example, you are, um, if you know how to create an app to build an architecture, and that is I'm not totally familiar with. I'm very more afraid than you because you need to identify your your tools. Then only I can contribute my uh, experience to enhance. But however, I could not assist you to build it. So you have your strength. I have a strength. When these two strengths combine together, then you could build up a much more powerful thing rather than I depends on you, you depends on me, and I say louder and more powerful than you. So this is the thing that we, we think that all profession, everybody should be equal in some way. So that is a... a, a Disney, I mean, still at, at that level, I think instead of questioning that, like, oh, kenapa ni tak ke mana? But I, I think, so if you know the answer, I think, Kalau tak ada jawapan, I think you can start on your own. You don't have to wait for the institution or you don't have to wait for the school to start. Man. You as individual, uh, as a group of student, pun, you, you can do that. So I think it's good to have this kind of platform and then to move forward because maybe at this point, maybe you know what you want to do. And then you, you, you memang tahu apa benda yang you nak. So if you want more knowledge, okay, maybe this is the process lah. These are the process kan, macam, okay, start dengan ni dulu, create a platform, uh, invite, uh, I mean, certain speakers to 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 talk about uh, uh, certain issues, certain, I mean, to discuss about uh, apa ni, policy ke, to discuss about the the education punya structure ke, things like that lah. So I think it, I think you can start on your own dah, macam, uh, don't, don't, don't stop here lah. Yeah. So, so that's a question from Prasad. How far back should we go back in time to consider that as our history? Um, yeah, sejarah. I think it, history is very important. Uh, first thing, kita tak tahu sejarah tu betul ke tak because it's, it's, it's one of the propaganda good by, by, by certain government lah macam different government uh, I mean, they have certain histories yang diorang uh, uh, they, they want to hide or they want uh, or this history, okay, we can we can tell the, the rakyat, we can tell the people but certain history, okay, maybe it's not it's not, it's, it's, it's very secret and then it's not open to, to public lah maybe lah but I think for, for you as individual, I think it's good to question that um, why 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 do you want to to apa ni, to uh, to refer to the history and and in I mean what purpose? Kalau macam you want to 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 search or to kaji your roots, okay? Then I think uh, I think the purpose lah. I think you should know the purpose of. Uh, certain history, let's say Malaysian architecture, 
uh, and with 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 limit limitation of of knowledge of Malaysian architecture, maybe they sampai certain period of time. But what is the purpose of I mean searching for that kind of history? So maybe to to analyze uh, a certain certain period of time, much like okay, this era different different uh, approach. Uh, this era is different uh, apa ni, uh, language. So then I think it's good to uh, to go back to I mean uh, I mean the the history yang paling jauh lah. I mean then you 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 start to strategize susun balik, make a timeline, and then try to connect with other history as well. So maybe um, how far to I think it depends on your purpose and depends on your your apa ni your intention lah kot. So different 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 uh, intention maybe leads to different timeline. So if it's about the nation maybe it's different lah. If it's about the Malaysian architecture specifically maybe it's different. Um yeah. Does it? Brian? Uh Okay. Uh, talking about history, right? You want to stretch back to it depends on how far you want to go from here, right? And tak payah pergi jauh sangat. If let's say you go back 10 years back, siapa yang start uh, buat uh, let's say design pakai exposed brick yang konkret ni? Kenapa orang pakai banyak pakai exposed brick yang konkret dekat Malaysia ni? Semua kedai pakai macam tu, semua rumah yang konon-konon designer buat pun nak pakai macam tu. And Sebelum tu lagi siapa yang start uh, buat idea of green building, uh, apa-apa apa semua ni uh, nak letak pokok dekat atas, whatever. So when you start to study this, 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 bukanlah kata root of things, tapi orang, uh, people would call it trend lah. But if you study trend tu, then you, 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 you would find uh, the starting point. They start dengan, okay, orang dah, mula, orang dah mula jemu dengan modern architecture, dan lepas orang dah jemu pula dengan idea of course modern architecture, suddenly you relate to, uh, you know, uh, pediment, uh, apa semua, and then, and then orang buat icon pula, pusing sana, pusing sini, or whatever kan. So, you, you, you when, when you study that, then you can relate in the history books, eh? bila you study pasal high-tech architecture, then you tengok kat luar, kenapa building-building ni banyak expose, expose, then, then you can relate, because they graduated during this time, and they were pretty much influenced by this, this, set of architects. That's why they jadi macam tu. And then later on, uh, you influenced by this architect, then that's why. Tapi, if you look at all those things as style, then style yang you dapat. But if you look deeper, then you will see that, you know, the social, political and economical situation of the people within that area or within that context has a very mm. direct uh, relationship. Contribution, with, yeah. Uh, with, their, with their environment. That's why mm. it becomes like that. So rather than you blindly follow a certain trend, oh sekarang ni trend dia orang buat banyak buat uh, bumbung macam nampak macam apa bentuk uh, rumah tu kan. Uh, so sekarang that is the trend. So so is that a very good reason for you to justify? So that's why when we talk about justification just now, if you very you have a very strong principle in design, uh, agenda in design or ideology in design, uh, then people people uh, very hard for other people to basically uh, you know argue with you because you have a very strong interest macam uh, some project itu pasal interest so we have to and normally this interest relate to us sometimes because kita membesar dekat kampung ke kita membesar dekat taman perumahan ke then that would have like a different way for us at looking uh, to look at things macam for instance uh, WHBC uh, bila kalau kita dengar dia punya lecture most of the time he, he would relate whatever that he's he, he, he does now basically has a relationship with the fact that his father is a toy maker, you know. So, dia punya, you know, the way they grow up, dia nampak benda-benda tu semua ada impact. So, sometimes pekerjaan parents kita ataupun environment kita, our school, uh, and now we have even more uh, influence on us with the internet, with the circle of friends. So, that's why I said, uh, I'm okay for, for us to expose ourselves more with any kind of knowledge or information. But then, you must be smart enough to filter those information. That is important because, okay, whether this information or this, this trend or this design or whatever, whether it's suitable with whatever that you want to do. It's not that just for the sake of everyone is, is doing that, that trend, then you have to do that. And later on, 
when when you practice is even you know uh, more cru- crucial where you need to probably explain that to your client right so client kata sadila i nak rumah macam you know barinis garden you know so okay lah kita bagi je barinis garden or you give a different approach okay maybe you, you don't really want a barinis garden what you want is something that is very you know tropical very you know uh, uh, very uh, environmental friendly and what not so in in that way you become more critical just not by saying that office is very critical right? but you understand with the uh, knowledge that you require so i think that is more you know important lah thank you um can i add something on the on the uh, question of history just now yeah okay What? Yes. Okay. So I, I believe that most history books, uh, you know, written by the champions, uh, the winners. Uh, so what mm. we were referring just now, I think, I I really back to the uh, proposal in Singapore, huh? it's trying to, you know, uh, I don't know, not complementary, yeah, critical uh, viewpoints and on what uh, people's what do you call it, people's square. And I remember that. So I believe that um, we winners or probably there's someone who holds the, the uh, sort of a government, you know, they have this kind of ruling, uh, what should students learn? I mean, propaganda can be right. on the, in the uh, But I think it's not just that. Uh, I believe that that is probably the uh, back of their mind now uh, what they want to, uh, you know, hold on the, the knowledge. Uh, but basically, it's about the strict thing uh viewpoints eh? for i mean remember during the 80s eh, budaya kuning they call it eh? i yeah. think this restriction somehow killed a lot of creativity during that period i mean the 80s were a time when you have all this nasi jani and all that who's actually yeah. doing a lot of creative things eh? but because they label them as yellow and not <laughs> sorry i'm not the chinese yellow so not, not they have diet <laughs> 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 <One week. laughs> okay, but I'm saying that you know, calling that budaya kuning, meaning that they are restricted to a lot of advantages. Ah, they cannot be, you know, uh, they cannot get grant from finas and all that. Yeah. Mm. So I believe that is another way how history works. So when we talk about uh, history, let's say uh, we go, if you want to say you go way back, huh? we learn about uh, you know the Malay houses, uh, Awan Lara. Mm. Uh, what do you call this thing? Eh? The, the house, you know, orang uh, budayawan, I don't know, uh, perempuan, uh, gender, gender berhias and all that. Uh, looking at it, we can see the artifacts that came up from that generation uh, into the, let's say, the wall, book, and all that, kind of beautiful. And we, we look at it in a uh, sort of a visceral kind of way, eh? uh, or probably as a uh, face value. But going to that period, we know that um, probably there's like now one percent rich people uh, during that period. Uh, you know the the sultan, and orang-orang kaya, orang-orang kaya setempat lah sikit. And bangsawan, uh, bangsawan, uh, bangsawan. <laughs> so and then the whole and then the whole uh, kind of people surrounding the area, farmers, nelayan, and they live in such poverty. So I think that idea is actually putting the the higher you know people uh, co- confirm and to continue the narrative saying that this is quite an important culture. But if you act in history, if you ask the right question, is that is that really, in, in my opinion, this kind of awalara is actually putting people in their place. For example, women. And you you uh, you say that okay in order for a gender to be like uh, they can elevate their pranan they have to actually prove themselves like right now women have to prove themselves uh, saying that okay uh, this is something and uh, so people will go to the house okay the mean he has saying that this woman is up there uh, somebody known so the, she herself even though the bangsawan uh, because he they can afford craftsmen and all that. Uh, even those kind of people have to put themselves out to prove that they are something yeah? meaning that history sh- we should ask that question is that really uh the opinion back then uh, is it 
is that uh, still an oppression to them? Uh, uh, I think that is what uh, what you call this thing. When you talk about history, you have to put in people as well. So, like architecture as well. When you talk about architecture, you cannot talk about just buildings, but you have to talk about the people there. In like, for example, lately we saw the uh, ambitious kind of competition, the winning competition that looks like I don't know, probably like Salomon Bridge. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm out there. I'm not going to say something bad about it, even though it's like shit. And, but I'm just saying that uh, what what is this uh, competition about? It's basically a kind of like a beauty competition. There's no content in it. And people are just talking about the face value of it. But mm. if you actually study on the bigger spectrum, what why do you need that competition? Why is it is a sort of a symbol uh, being something between both countries? Uh, do we actually need that? Or if we go, if we, at this moment of time when we see a lot of like a climate change and all that, is it actually useful? Is it beneficial? Should it be just like that? You know, leave it as that, to a roof and all that, cover necessity. Yeah? Now, even if we can't even provide necessity for the normal kind of, kind of people, during that same uh, moment where they were announcing the winners, at the same time in Bera Pahang, the uh, orang asli, eh? orang asli's land, I think about seven hectares of their land, has been basically confiscated. They live in that land for 100 years or more because that is their land. Eh? We'll explain about the right later. Eh? But uh, it's going to be a bit long, sorry. Eh? So, yeah, I, yeah. Eh? so I think, okay, 100 years or more, they've lived in that land. They probably, they call it orang asli, probably they're much older. They are not the people like uh, they are our archipelago who moves around fishing and all, they live there. And just a company 90, since 95, 1995, took that land and got a 99 year lease for that land to do uh, palm oil. Like most of the uh, stupid palm oil companies uh, in Malaysia, what they're doing, are they killing killing us, uh, killing us with the uh, creating this unbearable heat. And one of the reasons. Uh, so we, because of that, we have to question back uh you know they lost the land during the when they announced that the winner they they you know they have all these bulldozers are uh, all around the forest so they start to actually clean up the whole land and they have a sort of a uh, they give money yeah, a bit uh, but the money will, for example uh, twelve thousand ringgit uh, will be given within 10 years time 1200 ringgit a year for example to for them to find a place or for them to live is isn't that cruel yeah. zalim uh, yeah. To do yeah. that to this kind of people so i'm just going to explain a bit on that the reason why that happens if you go back to history i mean they call it the aboriginal people's law i don't know i forgot uh, protection huh? which was created in 1954 by the british by and by the same person by the same monarchy i would have to say that huh? that was supposed to protect malays they create this kind of like really long rule uh stating what is orang asli and all that and you know it somehow shamed me to say that they mentioned that orang asli is the third uh kind of like um class and malay is the first class bumi yeah? there's the second class bumi and then there's the third class bumi you know that kind of segregation yeah? this is the bukan double standard uh, triple standard making it like you know putting a normal human being yeah? into a level of you know you are degraded down there you are kind of like people and that is the law that they use to fight for the orang for the orang asli in bera do you see eh? you, you have to see that point of view and then the same person that we agung -agung kan, eh, who was supposed to protect them just kept it that way because they want to preserve their own kind of uh, kind of system there but then once this kind of like uh orang asli the land has been you know kind of confiscate and all that people start to actually look into that and they and most of let's say uh, probably me as a Malay itself, probably I would actually say it out loud. Right? You know, you are putting this orang asli as a triple, uh, triple standard them, putting in their shoes, uh, saying that they are not worthy to own anything at all. That's one. Eh? Uh, and then the second, uh, and, and are, uh, are we going to discuss that? This is a, actually a discourse uh, where architecture students should talk about. Okay, the reason why I said this is that Going back to the idea of non-school and how I do know how I can relate that to non-school is that the idea of non, 
Yeah, you see, yeah, when you talk about non, meaning that there's nothing, uh, no attachment to it. For example, knowledge. Yeah, you talk about knowledge in schools. We have incentives. We have marking. We have rubric. You have all these classes you have to do. You have to be in fourteen classes a day and all that. You are being pushed towards that, and th that is an incentive. On that is also the kind of teaching that you get from your parents. Yeah? A non-school is basically is a non-incentive kind of learning, meaning that. I actually want to learn. I don't care if you want to give me any grades or not. You know, I don't care if there's any people, superior people on top, uh, you know, other higher kind of thing. I just want, it's the idea of actually uh, you know, taking out the idea of this status quo, you know, of this higher being, of somebody saying I should do or should not do. I think the whole point of non-school is not basically uh, about um, saying that it is an alternative definitely it's an alternative of a university but the idea of learning the word non itself meaning that you actually don't have to even attach yourself to it you don't have to prove yourself to it like the uh, you know you don't to put yourself out there you just have to learn because it's the it's the again i will probably repeat again what zazi was saying celebration you are celebrating the idea of learning itself so i believe that all this kind of thing going uh, around and around thinking about what is this and what is that is about you know the 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 the, the uh, high state of learning which is searching for the truth you know you are searching for that truth um probably i think long enough lah. i think that's it lah. thank you okay okay bagus, bagus. i think yeah, I, I, that, that I, is the conclusion I, lah, so we can end up the session lah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think no, just switching. We, we, we really need this kind of open open dialogue, like open discussion. Yeah. And, and I think it's important Criticism for everyone, as well, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, it's important for everyone to be open to, to the idea of that, the idea of you are not limited in talking about something. And probably you can argue and you could agree to disagree on certain things. But the, the, the intention there is basically to, to like, like what Azhar put it nicely, like to, to find the truth. So if you can prove that that is the truth, then no one can actually challenge you if you, if you have that, that thing. So I think that's part of the, the, the spirit. And I agree totally with all the issues that have been raised up by everyone. And of course, I think we need to discuss that even more. And we need to have, you know, an institution, ke, student group, ke, we need to have more we need to talk more to each other. We don't need, we don't hope for other people to provide things to us. Kalau kita asyik nak harap uh, apa, uh, pertubuhan apa nak tolong kita ke, uh, lembaga apa nak tolong kita ke, kementerian apa nak tolong kita ke, that's, what, that's why we, we, are, we aren't progressing. We have to find our own initiative. We talk to the right people. We gather and we unionize in terms of uh, finding the truth and for the sake of gaining more knowledge and to really uplift uh, ourselves in terms of doing the best in, in our field, in architecture, and to contribute to the society. Lah. Ada question lagi ke? Dah 10.48 ni. Um, if, uh, I think there might be a bit more questions, but if that's okay yeah. with uh, you guys. Okay, okay. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. The, uh, you block it, Nandi? No, no, I think you should stop and refill minyak or? Yeah. Refill minyak. Yeah, yeah, I think we are fine. Yeah, 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 next question. Um, so, we have a question that was asked on our Instagram page. Um, so, it's from Shaf Pariker. Um, what differs non-school from any other unconventional education hub? Ni dah jawab aku tadi. I think we... Kan Zee? I think we... You mean the difference eh? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah I, I think, I think yeah. when we mention that non-school is not a school and we never pretend uh, no, that to be a uh, school, meaning to say that it's about celebrating knowledge. It's about uh, finding other ways and uh, getting other people to, to to be involved. And you know, that's the whole idea of it, lah. And we celebrate whoever wants to probably uh, tag along with this uh, with this notion. 
And if there are practitioners out there you want to contribute, then we are open for discussion. If there are institutions out there to you want students to be more open, to have more opportunity, to gain more knowledge uh, differently, to have more opinion, uh, to have more uh, ideology or agenda, then then we are open uh, to that as well. Uh. So I, I, I think I think the whole thing is about that. And uh, we are not saying that we are, you know, the savior or we are really propagating this idea and we are the first to do this. I, I think that's not the, the whole idea of it. Lah. I think the idea of it is for us to, to look at alternatives, to look at option and to start to discuss on critical issues. Lah. We should not talk about things that are not important uh, and does not really contribute to, to society or do not contribute to society. So I think that is important as, 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 as a starting point. And that's why we highlight the, the notion of the in-between. Because Kat Malaysia ni, normally we are very sensitive. You know, if you're not an AR, then you're not an architect. You should not call yourself an architect. Betul lah. But it doesn't mean that if I don't have an AR, then I cannot speak, uh, speak up or give an opinion on architecture. Uh, and that is wrong. Of course, we, we can talk about architecture. We can have our own opinion. And if other people want to you know, debate or want to challenge, then, then, then we are okay with that. And if you are a student, it's the same as well because we are the in-between and we are not uh, we, we, we don't have any obligation to to uphold any organization or any institution. That's why this is like politics juga lah. So the moment that you join any political party, you are obliged to somehow uh, uh, obey the direction of the president of the party. Uh, so bila dah macam tu, it's no longer about democracy. It's no longer about you know, the idea of for the people speaking up uh, and, and voicing up what is right. So I think we should all be independent. We should all have our own opinion and we should open for any discussion with a very civil manner. Kita respect semua orang and for the sake of knowledge. So kalau semua orang boleh faham benda tu, then tak adalah isu auku. Sebab kita semua jadi macam ni sebab berpuluh tahun kita memang tak tak demonstrasi. Bukan nak suruh semua orang demonstrasi tapi kita tak rasa kita ada right kita rasa kalau kita mencabar satu-satu ni tu kita macam kurang ajar. But that's not, not that's not the point. Kita sepatutnya diajar supaya kita boleh reason. Kita boleh reason dan tak sepatutnya orang yang lebih tua tu betul. Tengoklah kita duk harap pada orang tua apa jadi dekat negara kita. So kita ni saya pun bukan muda lah basically. We're talking about the younger generation, you need to open up your mind. You need to uh, macam talk more about yourself and discuss and discuss and what not and try to find the truth. And not for the sake of masuk universiti, dapat graduate, masuk kerja, that's it. You don't know, lagi 10 tahun mungkin dah tak ada dah kerja dekat luar tu macam sekarang ni. You can't, sekarang ni pun kalau nak apply pergi kerja pun, it's not really uh, not as easy or as simple as 10 years ago. So, you have to equip yourself. You have to probably, you know, be be more resilient ke, ataupun you you you, you have to find ways to, to, to survive and to sustain. How? By opening up more discussion. So, that architecture tu, definition dia bukan hanya kerja di office architect. You can do other things but still practicing architecture. You can you can do a lot of things with the knowledge that you have in architecture. I hope that answers your question. Uh, so thank you Zazie. Um, I might be opening it up for any last questions before we end the Q&A session. I have a question if that's okay. Uh, can I know like what's your next plan perhaps like maybe an internship program under Studio Karya or non-school I don't know. Okay, if I may answer as well. Okay, for, for now, we are trying to diversify in terms of the uh, what non-school could be lah, rather than just a workshop because workshop ni, uh, normally the workshop, idea of a workshop normally is just four or five days lah, normally. Tapi sebab kita buat online the other day, that it becomes four session which is a month. Uh, and somehow I think it's better because within that four session, you ada masa lagi untuk baca a little bit, to revise or design a little bit, to look at other things, to discuss. And probably, maybe after this, we can do like a, maybe a research project. Maybe lah, I don't know. Uh, of course, depends on, you know, all these uh, resources, ke, sponsorship, ke, whatever lah. Without that also, we can do. For instance, we can we can have an office uh, macam, macam, apa, macam, like you said lah, and, and not necessarily just us lah. Meaning for us, 
we want to create a platform and we want to invite like-minded people to contribute. So if you feel like, you know, students are lacking in this area, then probably you open up a, a summer school studio ke whatever lah, katalah normally you ada 14 weeks of project and limited to kena buat building uh, 1,000 square meter lah, 2 tingkat lah, whatever tu. Let's say you are open, uh, like kita buat summer school ni, katalah, Abu Nazar lah buat, katalah contoh kan. Eh. Okay, uh, so then kita tak restrict anyone to follow any requirement, then kita tengok apa possibility yang boleh keluar when you open up the the the, the ni so that you can you can do more uh, uh, things that are uh, more open uh, for interpretation and and probably uh, you know more diverse in 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 methods and technique and what not then kita tengok apa yang jadi so i i think it's about growing this idea lah it's not really trying to say that we have to lead whatever kalau siapa-siapa ada any you know because we are we are still talking to a lot of people trying to find other ways to to contribute lah and and we we have some things in the pipeline lah tapi tak boleh mention lagi because tak tahu jadi ke tak but but those are some of the things lah we 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 want to go into of course first of all we don't want non school to be about knowledge in architecture only kalau boleh kita, kita dapat you know go into the the uh, social culture ke atau into art ke you know into whatever lah uh, into even technology ke whatever we are, we are open for 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 that kind of things and i think in the future architecture ni dia tak boleh jadi satu discipline je it has to be you know uh, slightly you know broader and bigger and and somehow more people can understand architecture than what it is today because sometimes it's very sad that people thought that architecture ni macam arkitek ni macam plastic surgeon lah you know people don't come for you to get a solution on health people just come to you to make a nose job ke apa betulkan muka ke something like that so if you think it that way it's an insult sebab orang ingat you ni nak cantikkan benda je which is something that is very wrong in the in the idea of an architect and as the architect lah so I think we we have to, to so so how to 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 throw away that stigma. We have to be out there and we have to talk about more real issues. Then baru lah orang respect. Baru orang tak kata arsitek ni bimbo ya. Arsitek nak pakai you know uh, apa baju hitam tu nak cakap pasal ni cantik ni cantik ni style ni tak style. So that's why lah. And then kita tengok competition pun outcome dia macam tu. So that's why people punya perception on us is about always about aesthetics. It's not about ethics ke. It's not about techniques ke. <laughs> You know, it's always about aesthetic. So, uh, you know, I, I think we we are opening up this this platform, and we we for for a bet, you know, to build up the nation, we really need to 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 talk more and have more discussion and discuss, but with an outcome lah. So I hope this benda ni tak habis malam ni je lah. So you guys probably, despite with all the talks that you have, and and probably just don't listen to whatever that you have in here. Try to find it on the internet, ke, tengok other school apa yang orang dia tengah cakap pasal apa and and try to 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 be in the discussion uh, so that you are more open and then you share with your friends i think that's how we we should progress lah i don't anyone want to okay thank you uh, i asked because uh, our lecturer cakap Macam she plans of, uh, she's interested in planning a collaboration with you guys in your workshop. Tapi that's just what she said to me lah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 think, I think I think that's good and and that's the starting point. Basically, we can we can start to do that and with whatever that we we have in terms of uh network or whatever, then we should, we should share all our networks lah. So satu lagi benda tu kita nak start build up the network. So masa kita buat uh, last year punya non-school tu and kita start to talk in Indonesia kat Rabun Senja punya platform and then kita ada podcast dengan R Plus uh, then, then there are already other people start, apa, looking at non-school as, as an MCT uh, and dah boleh nampak macam you know you can work more global lah rather than asyik-asyik tengok kat dalam negara je kan so I think I think that is also a way macam UITM ke, Taylor's ke, whatever, local university, UTM ke, UM ke then you can have, you can see like what other people are doing and slowly you are learning from each other even more and tak je lagi macam stigma kalau universiti ni, design ni macam ni je universiti ni, design ni macam ni je so because you start to open up and see other possibilities I think I think that's the probably like a way forward and, and we should we should try to work uh, with that lah Okay, thank you so much
Okay, so um, thank you, Zazi, Brian, also Ashan, for the Q&A session. Um, I guess that this marks the end of our session for today. Um, so I would like to thank everyone for joining us for this evening's talk. I would like to thank our speakers as well, um, Ashan, Brian, and especially Zazi, um, <laughs> for going the extra mile, for actually having to drive quite a distance to join us for this talk. Um, we yeah. really appreciate the efforts. Um, and also, we apologize for kind of extending uh, the talk uh, a bit for a half an hour. I hope it's okay with everyone. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, for more updates and info regarding the schedule of the Checkmate Architecture Review and also regarding the future Architalks, you can visit our Instagram page at Navada Studio, which will be linked in the chat box. You can also check out Non-School's um, Instagram page, which will also be linked in the chat box. Um, so like I said um, in the beginning that we were planning to introduce or launch uh, something very exciting tonight. So um, by the end of this talk, we will officially launch our uh, Checkmate Architecture Review website, uh, which will include um, a lot of the items in uh, the review, especially the works from each of the studio. Um, it won't show all the works, but it will show some of the best works from these students. So the link will be uh, linked in the chat box, as, as you can see, and you could go, you could go ahead and um, check them out if you uh, have some time. So again, thank you very much for joining this evening session. Uh, it pains me to bid everyone a farewell. Um, we hope to see you guys again in the future talks. Um, and on behalf of Chatmate, we sincerely apologize for any inconveniences that have happened or may happen in the not too distant future. Um, so are there any uh, last words from Brian, Ashran or Zazi? Uh, yeah, I think thank you for the opportunity and I think uh, sorry for the technical punya issue tadi lah. <laughs> no, no I think it's somehow macam, I mean the mood lah. I think it, it I mean, maybe the, the change, the, the, the mood and, and yeah, I think we slowly get into the, the track balik and then hopefully yeah. you, you guys uh, learn something out of it and then we, we learn something new as well today, tonight. Um, yeah, I think thank you again. Uh, yeah. All the best. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think from from my side, it's more likely is that uh, the history is now lah. Because the future, you look back as a history. Anything to make it worthwhile is from now on, and you create your own history. I think that's the best part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Uh, for me, I think terima kasih for the invitation, Ma. And I hope, uh, you know, in, 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 the, in the future, we can have maybe more, uh, you know, not, not just discussion. Now. I, I think we can try to work out something in terms of, because I, I was always interested, uh, because uh, we were, uh, we attended some of the, like, architecture workshop on the student, and, and we see a lot of possibilities and potential in student punya, you know, organization, now, because you all had the organization. But then rather than just, Kumpul ramai-ramai sorak itu ini kan. Of course, tu seronok lah, right? You know, everyone <laughs> loves to do that. And and we were part of that system as well before lah. But rather than that, maybe we need to talk about serious issue. Bukan lah serious sangat. Tapi something yang sebenarnya men, me, ada effect to your your future. Because to build the nation tu, we are part of it. So I think looking forward for even informal discussion ke uh great session ke whatever lah i think i think we are open for that and i think we should you know, talk more among among the students and universities and all these in between the people lah of course there are people yang dah atas-atas tu dia tak kisah dah they already have the projects and what not so i think it's about you know us getting together and trying to understand the situation and try to do something with it bukan cakap je lah bukan complain je but we we have to do something with it. and for us non school thing is is the product of that discussion lah no, this is kind of the So probably on your side or uh, on the student side or other people, probably you can start to talk together and then you will really grow something. So with that, I would say terima kasih banyak for inviting us. Thank you. Yeah. 
thank you guys as well for the amazing share session as well as the, and also the discussions just now. Um, so again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Brian, Ashran, and also Zazi from Non-School for joining us um, and cleaning out your schedules. Thank you to the lecturers, all the lecturers that have attended. Um, so yeah, uh, we will end the night with Tasbih uh, Kafara and Surah al -As. So I think that's it. Um, good night and assalamualaikum. Thank you everyone for joining. Hello. Thank you so much everyone for joining. Thank you Ar Ashran. Thank you Zazi. Okay, thank you okay. Maranis. Assalamualaikum. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Mrs. Zazi, later on we can can do some certain uh, collaboration with Akisa actually. Ah, boleh, boleh. <laughs> <laughs> email lah, email, email. Saya nak kan tadi kan, tapi tak 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 sempat nak selit selit lah. Tapi, it's okay. Um, I believe. Yeah, I think we can we can follow up with with email also. Kot. Yeah, sure, sure, mm, sure. Mm. Okay. Then, Akisa is actually um are doing uh something. We are planning to do um benda-benda yang more productive. Uh, give something back to the students. Nak buat engagement to the with the industries more actually. So it's actually this session yang the reviewer team bring you all here is actually very good. Uh, mm. Expose them very well. Sebenarnya macam dah lama kita nak session ni sebenarnya. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much. It's a very long discussion. Sangat bagus. So uh, I'm really happy. Uh, hopefully later on kita boleh contact lah kot eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. No problem. Alright, thank you so much. Okay, bye. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Thank you everyone for joining. Bye. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Assalamualaikum.